was I born gay? I was convinced I was. Born and raised in Southern California and Protestant, whatever that means. Jesus' birth at Christmas and prayers at holiday dinners only. June 13 of 1963, my brother Michael dies at age three. Tonsillectomy turned tragic. My dad blamed God and checked out and stayed at work. My mom got angry and my brother Todd was lost, not quite a year old, searching for his big brother. December 4th of that year, I was born with a dislocated hip. <clears throat> in my late 30s, I would get an answer in part of why I thought I could never please my mom. Why she was always angry with me. My aunt in therapy with my mom disclosed that my mom hit her stomach while pregnant with me, screaming at God, why didn't you take this one? I don't even know. As a young child, I was called a tomboy and my brother a fag. Just because I didn't wear girly clothes and I was better at sports than my brother at this age. On hot summer days, I ran around the neighborhood with no shirt on until one day my mom said, Terry, you need to go put a shirt on. And by the way, we need to get you a bra. Inside, I screamed, what the heck is she talking about? A bra, yuck. I didn't understand why guys got to run around and I now was trapped. My first suicidal thought came at age six, sitting on the laundry room floor, crying out to God to take me. I couldn't take this life anymore. He brought my dog and when he licked my face, this moment passed. There would be many, many more episodes throughout my life of self-harm always in fear of everything push-pulled. Doctors, special ed tutors, speech teachers, summer school, not understanding anything and not understood. I was always in trouble and I didn't know why. Yelling and screaming was the norm. I was called the problem child. I was bullied and then became the bully. My brother favored. Fourth grade, I heard that I would go I wouldn't go to school because it was my first male teacher. But this was the year I witnessed a group of girls carving their names into their arms like tattoos. Sports were my outlet. Still fearful, but I was good at it and people would cheer me on. Boys would pick me for their team first and after the game was over, so was I. Passed over and never asked to dance. High school using drug, alcohol drugs got me accepted into the big guys on campus and those already out of school. My friends' families were more of a family to me, so I was never at home. First time I ever witnessed a mother reading her Bible and TBN on the TV. I always wanted to be over there and my mom tried to stop me one day. She said, what is it? Are you guys lesbians? This would be the first time I put my hands on my mother and I slammed her against the wall. There would be many other demonic explosions throughout my life. I hated her and I loved her. They gave me a diploma, already told only money for my brother for college. And I never told about the volleyball scholarship offered from Long Beach State. There was no way I could cheat my way through college and I thought I wasn't good enough anyway. That Thanksgiving dinner table, I was pressured by my family, what are you gonna do with your life, be a beach bum? So I did only what I knew how to do. I went to Laguna Beach, took way too much acid, and God interrupted my buzz and told me to go into the army and don't tell anyone. I was so scared. I took the test, I lost five pounds, and I was going to be a truck driver. Nobody wanted me to go in except my mother. 1983, basic training, Fort Dix, New Jersey. There was a group of girls off to the side, and I wanted to be a part of their group. They shut me out because I would speak of hating homosexuals and spraying them with fire hydrants at the bus stops. One of these girls took me under her wing, and I had my first experience with her. But wait, my family and my friends would disown me. Off to Germany, heartbroken, and rejected from this girl, but not being a hater of gays anymore, compassionate. 
I met my husband. Yes, I was married. <laughs> I met my husband, and when we finished our military duty, we moved to my hometown. Cocaine came into the picture. My closest friends told me they, they were all gay, and I told them about my experience. I started going to the gay bars with them and prayed out loud, God, I would only leave my husband if he would cheat on me. My husband had no characteristics of unfaithfulness, but it happened. Later, the Lord would disclose to me that cocaine, meth, and heroin were literally the devil's potion. I started to use meth to lose weight, and now I was convinced I was gay and lived that lifestyle. 1989, miraculously, I passed the test in academy and became a youth correctional officer. Such a hypocrite with everything. Do as I say, not as I do. A co-worker gave me a Bible and turned me on to Joyce Meyer. I never read the Bible, just kept it in my vehicle. I do remember when the subject of homosexuality came up, I said, well, man wrote that, not God. So blind and so deaf. I always felt so much pain around me and through me that I would use more and more meth to harden my heart. People wanted me at their parties, but behind closed doors, I was hitting walls, abusing loved ones, and killing myself, spiritually dead. 2003, I medically retired. I had a nervous breakdown and moved to Sacramento to get away from meth, but I just found it here. Hospitals, psychiatrists, psychologists, diagnosed bipolar, a little schizo, my mom always yelling and screaming, personality disorder, manic, depression, anxiety, panic attacks, and last but not least, suicidal. The house I rented became a crack den, and I was a shot caller, demonic to say the least. All the pharmaceutical medications I was on were all weight gainers, and one Christmas morning, I found myself at my end. In the emergency room, 400 pounds, I couldn't breathe, and my shins were splitting down the middle and pouring out water. I cried out to God, if you are real, show me a sign. 2012, August 19th, I walked into Warehouse Christian Ministries in Sacramento to hear some music. The pastor said, we are having an open baptism at the park later, and even if you were baptized as an infant and you, re re and you respect Jesus, come and get baptized. I had so much fear in me, but I went, and supernaturally, things started happening. Sexual encounters stopped, and I was comfortable sleeping on the couch. But, but I was still gay, right? My partner and I became domestic partners for legal purposes for rights in hospitals. And when the law said we could get married, I began making plans. I started hearing this voice inside me, ask the doctors about medical marijuana. The doctor said I was a good candidate and I was off all pharmaceutical medications and using only alternative meds. At a Joyce Myers conference in Sacramento I went to, I asked out loud, Jesus, if you are real, show me a sign. He showed me two. I said hi to this lady in a nice shirt. She was wearing a Joyce Myers t-shirt. She said nothing and left. Feeling embarrassed, I thought, oh, she must not have heard me. She came back and bought me a shirt, and it fit. And when they played this season on TV, out of all those people, there I was, and Joyce talking about covering up scars. April 2014, the Sunrise Mall had an event called The 99. Live actors playing ultimate near-death experiences, hell and Jesus at the cross. My partner and I said yes to prayer at the end. I had Ashley, and I said, I'm looking for more Thumper Church. I didn't even know what that meant or what even home church was. It just came out of my mouth. She told me about the Rock of Roseville. I live in Rancho Cordova, and the Lord took me to a church close to me, to be me there, but it was clear. He said, I just want to show you something, but this is not your home. I went to the rock, and someone helped me fill out the, the newcomer's card. When it came to marital status, I said, sorry, I have a domestic partner. I don't even know why I was apologizing, but she said, that's okay, welcome. 
I was so scared, but the Lord told me to go to the front row and sit. I went to the middle of the front row and a man came up to me and hugged me. It was Pastor Francis. I was not a hugger. <laughs> and, and was like, who is, who is this guy? The Lord spoke to me that day and said, this is your home. Shortly after that, I was in, in my mobile home and the heavens opened up and an audible voice said, my word is true. I hit the deck and fell on my face. I was shaking, but I felt so much love. I lifted my head and said, but Lord, how am I to read the Bible? You know I cheated my way through high school, that's how I tell you. Then the soft voice came from my heart and said, that's why I brought you the Holy Spirit. He is going to teach you. The Holy Spirit started teaching me about tithings and giving, that it was about trusting God with everything. Pawn shops no more, praise God. Church altar call. If you have something you want to get rid of, come, give it to the Lord. I knelt down and said, Lord, take meth from me. I was supernaturally healed, 25 years of addiction gone, in Jesus' name. Oh. hunger kept me going. Reading the word was amazing. God was speaking to me. I read marriage between a man and a woman. I told my partner we can't get married. No problem. She never thought she was gay anyways. <laughs> that was a plus, right? <laughs> but I thought I was still born that way. Then it happened. I was getting free food at this Catholic church in a Christian African American older gentleman said to me, abomination. I didn't even know what we were talking about, but I will never forget the look on his face. Did that just come out of my mouth? <laughs> my stomach hurt. My stomach hurt so <laughs> My stomach hurt. And I looked up this word on my roommate's phone when I got home. Homosexuality, an abomination to God. I hit the floor crying. God, how can this be? I thought I was born this way. I then saw a real-to-real -real vision of my life and choices I had made. I renounced and repented and have never struggled in this area again. <clears throat> I, I received confirmation that the Lord gives real-to-real -real visions. It was a healing night and a, and a Muslim lady shared her testimony about an encounter with Jesus, a real-to-real -real vision of her life, and she gave herself her life to Jesus. I chose to go deeper and deeper, every prayer group, every conference, to Dr. Most training, renouncing, repenting, and inner healing sessions. After fasting and praying 12 days, the Lord freed me from all medications. Five years, no alcohol, no cigarettes, no drugs, no meds, no sex on purpose, and no struggles in these areas. I am a beloved daughter, uniquely and wonderfully made. I am the bride of Christ, Christ in me, the hope of glory. I am just a normal Christian, a child of God, just like you. I love you.